Hello, this is David Vallade with AltaVista Technology, and today I was going to do a little bit of a demonstration of the functionality behind SmartList Designer. Uh, we still like SmartList Builder quite a bit, actually. SmartList Builder is a product that used to be an a la carte module that you could buy through Microsoft, and it was a product that was originally created by E1 Solutions. And things have changed over the years. The product is still available, it's still great, but it's not included in the Microsoft price list anymore. If you are just buying Dynamics GP today, you probably don't have SmartList Builder. But I wanted to show today just a little bit of the functionality behind SmartList Designer, which is included with Dynamics GP. So you can see here, I've opened up uh, my SmartList um, window and I have typical things if you're used to SmartList at all, you're used to seeing the folder structure on the left and any kind of SmartList data here in this main pane over here on the right. Newer uh, versions of GP will have this button here that says new. And that's what I'm gonna do here today. So I'm gonna click the new button and a window pops open where I can see the SmartList Designer window. A few things here, I guess we'll explain a little bit. Uh, right at the top here, um, where I can type some text, I have a list name where I can create a name for a SmartList I'm about to create. Now I thought a good example that I would use is uh, around a request I get quite a bit. Let's say I wanna see all my users and see just a, a glimpse of some of the security settings that those users might have. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make a smart list. I'm gonna call it security. Okay, and what product am I going to be using? So the Dynamics GP product line is actually built into multiple products that have come together to create one solution. If I were pulling fixed assets data, for example, that's a different product than the Dynamics GP one and so on. And depending on what modules you have installed, whether those are ISVs or if they're just different functionalities from Dynamics GP itself, you might see different items in your list. But for me, I'm doing security. Security is a built-in part of Dynamics GP, so I am good there. Next, I need a series, which this is where I'm going to place my smart list. Now, security actually is an interesting one. There's not a lot of good homes here from this list. I want to pick company. It's actually a, a system type of uh, smart list, but company is the best fit in my reckoning for what I can pick here. So that's what I'm going to choose. All right, next I'm going to look over here on the left and I can see here I have a list of all the different database views as they call them. And I have a list of fields and relationships and filters. We'll talk about all those in a second. This database view uh, listing here gives me the ability to pick bits of functionality from a lot of different uh, groupings of modules within Dynamics GP. So I'm going to expand this Dynamics GP one and expand the tables. I'm just going to give, I'm not going to cover literally every bit of functionality here, but we'll get do enough here to give you an idea. And we'll actually have a smart list when we're all done. So I have these this folder structure that tells me the organization of all the different types of tables that are under the Dynamics GP heading. And I think I already mentioned this earlier, but I'm looking at something that's system. So system are those types of uh, tables and views, I guess, well, tables for our purposes that are... Uh, that are spanning all companies. And obviously your security, you have security to potentially more than one company. So that's how I know this to be right. I'm also gonna make it look easy when I'm picking these tables here because these tables are named uh, pretty well, but sometimes it's difficult to understand what might be in any table by, by this description. Uh, I'm gonna hopefully make that look easy. Um, so I'm gonna go down here and I did a little research so I kinda know my tables coming into this recording. Uh, but I know that one of the things I'm gonna to wanna to know is the security assignment for a user, right? We talked about that. So if I go to the security assignment user role, if I, I can hit the little expansion here, I can see all the different columns that are in this table. In this case, only three. So which ones do I care about? Um, if I click the box on the far left here, I'm gonna choose all of them. If I only wanna pick uh, a handful of them, I can deselect or unselect the whole thing and just select the correct things that I need. Um, I'm gonna choose these here. Uh, actually, I'll leave the company ID in for a second just to make a point. So you can see what I've done here is I've picked these three columns from this table. They show up as I, as I ticked on them over here in the selected fields. Now I kind of skipped over this uh, little toolbar that I have on this window. One of the options I have here is execute query. And at the bottom here, I have this results pane, which is empty at the moment. I'm gonna go ahead and click that 
execute query button. And let's make this a little bit bigger. Maybe we can see it a little. Um, what we have here, I have those three columns. So I have the user ID, makes sense. These are users in my system. Uh, I have the security role ID. So this is how GP does security. You have uh, one or more roles that a user can have. And then every role can have one or more tasks beneath it. So this is a start. I can see the user. I can see the roles that they have. And I see a company ID. Okay, now this company ID though, that's interesting to me. That doesn't mean a ton to me. What is that? That's a number, right? I, I really would rather have the company name. Uh, luckily, I can do that. If I were to scroll up on this toolbar just a little bit over to the C's, I have a company master table. Let me expand that and see what we have. Ooh, a lot in here. Well, I don't care about quite so much. Uh, the company ID is there, of course. But the company name, that's really what I want, just the company name. So I have that. Now, whenever I add, and you can see the, the column, the columns are all listed here in the selected fields. I've added two tables, right? I have this company master table and my security assignment user role table. That's a mouthful. Um, but I have these two tables, but I need to tell the system how they're related. And if you're used to databases, this is a familiar task. So I need to go into the relationship section of my window and I get to say how any one table, and I get to pick a key field like my company ID and how that's related with a couple different joins to a second table and company ID. So I could say the company ID in this first table is going to be what links it to the second table. That they're going to have that in common, company ID. Um, I'm going to hit this big red X here and delete all my hard work. And why would I do such a thing? Because there is this thing called auto link, which I like. So a lot of times when we're linking these fields, not all the time, but very often we're linking fields based on the keys that are already established up on those tables. So a good um, if I'm feeling lucky, I guess, or if I just want to uh, take a chance here, maybe save some time, I can always hit this auto link button. It's going to ask me if I want to reset because I may have already done some work in that uh, relationship. But I'm going to say go ahead and reset whatever's there. And wouldn't you know, it goes ahead and it does the same mapping that or the same relationships that I had originally. So this is good. Uh, I have a little couple other bits of information I want to add here, so let me do that. So I have here, oh, and just to see that, I should have hit my execute query before I move on. So let me click that. Ah, better. I can see my user ID, my security ID, this company ID, which I actually don't care about, and this company name. And actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I don't care about that company ID. I wish that would go away. So I'm going to come on down here where I had originally selected it and uncheck it. I'll click my little execute query. And hmm, that's looking better to me. So I see the user ID. I can see the role or roles that each of those users have and the company that they have that security role for. This is looking good. A couple other things I want to do here is I also want to get, um, I mentioned that every role has a task associated with it in GP. So uh, why don't I go get that? I wanted some information about the tasks that, may, that go into that role. So I'm going to go into the security assignment role task. So again, I'm making this look easy. But if I pick that, I can see this is the table that shows every role role in Dynamics GP, and it's repeated multiple times. I get to see all the tasks underneath it. I kind of want both of those, really, I think. Um, well, I already have the role here. It's so maybe just the task ID is the only new bit of information here. Um, but then I need to go ahead and uh, add a relationship again, because I've added a third table. Let's try my auto link. My buddy, let's see how it works. And I'm liking that. There's a little thing about uh, joins that I'll come back to in a second though. All right, so now I have my roles, my tasks. Let's take my execute query button and see what we have. Hmm, this is taking a lot of shape here. So I have the buyer, the role they have, again, that company, and I can see the task. And, and I might see more than one task here for that same thing. So I can see there's an admin task and there's an inquiry task and, and so on. Um, luckily, GP adds some descriptions around those tasks so that we have a better idea of what these tasks are, are there to do. It's not perfect. Not every task has a nice plain text description of what they do, but quite a few do. Um, so, and I can get that if I go over to the security task master table. Again, that's uh, some of these are apparent, some of these aren't. But under this table, I can see quite a bit of information here. Um, 
So I'm going to get the security test name and the description and add that. I'm going to go ahead and hit my auto link here. And it's going to ask if I want to replace that, and that's fine. So now I have that. And let's execute our query. And let's see what we have here. So I have my user. I have my role, company, the task. And now a description of that task. Like, for example, this top one here um, gives me a description that says something to the effect of uh, purchase requisition table, something, something, <laughs> tables. Um, and then the security task description uh, gives a little bit better description, purchase requisition tables, and so on. Now, I probably will see some blanks in here if I scroll down far enough. Um, and that is okay. That just is telling me that the, some, of these, uh, some of these tasks may not have a description in GP. Well, this is looking pretty good. I have a lot of things. Now, I have a couple of things I could do. Like I could say that I want to filter based on something, based on perhaps a user, or um, perhaps I want to filter on any number of things, uh, a company or so on and so on. And it depends on the smart list I'm looking at. Um, in this case, I'm keeping this easy, so I'm not going to filter anything out. Uh, I'm going to do one other little tweak here. So this is kind of specific to the data that I picked. Um, if you know about GP, you know that there is a role called a power user, and a power user may not have tasks. So folks who are used to working with databases are going to be a little bit ahead of me on this, but I'm going to change these um, joins to be left joins instead of inner joins. And if you don't know what that means, it's um, there's a little bit of information we have on our website over at altavistatech.com that might talk you through some of that. Uh, I think I missed, actually. Let me change that here. I'm going to delete that one. I actually added something on a blank line. Let me add that left joint back where I want it. Okay. And run my query to make sure I still have information, which I do. And this is looking good. And just like that, I want to say okay. And just like that, I have 430 rows in my company. Of course, your mileage will vary. And I have a smart list called security. Um, there's still some steps about letting users see this and different things like that. But um, I think you see that the smart list designer did a pretty good job here. Gave me information. I really like the fact that I could keep querying or executing that query as I went along to see how the data was taking shape to understand if I was on the right track or not. Please visit us over at altavistatech.com for any of your other questions. Thanks.